Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Friday. We have a great presentation from Hometown TV, but of course, I want to bring a couple of things to your attention before we get started. Um, doesn't that look delicious? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this um, is a great vehicle to get the word out about your business. Don't forget, this is the Chamber's own publication. Yeah. So uh, speak to Karen Hadley and the team to make sure you're getting your news out. Well, without further ado, let me bring Fred Honnold up. Um, Fred's been involved with Hometown TV since 1999, 10 years in, in the leadership role. And uh, we were talking about it. This organization that was incorporated in 1979 so we're looking at almost 40 years and it's been a great asset in the community the opportunity to learn a little bit more how we we can use it for our businesses great. Beth thank you good to be with the chamber uh, hometown really values our relationship with the chamber over the last number of years and especially the past decade uh, your collection we, as you probably know, sponsor your community calendar page. And it really is an honor to do that. In turn, we film uh, a number of First Friday presentations. And we have Amanda Olson of Hometown here today. So Amanda, thank you. Along with Jonathan Aronoff, Amanda runs our, our, our engine room down at uh, uh, Hometown. Also, I see that you have for the uh, annual awards dinner, our Miles McMahon. And Miles has been a real close friend and mentor over the years. Uh, Miles and I spoke um, a few weeks ago. It's great that you're honoring him. He entered hospice just recently. But I would say uh, Miles is the senior statesman of hometown, and he really has been a guiding star inside. I've got my slides up here. I'm going to use them more as cue cards today as I have a conversation with you about hometown, and then I'd like to leave time for Q&A on your part. But what I can share with you is when you start out, who is hometown television? We're a 501c3 nonprofit. As Beth had mentioned, we actually began uh, incorporated back in December of 1979, went operational in 1980. So we just finished out celebrating our 35th anniversary all of a few years ago. We're looking forward to our, our 40th coming up. And with that, we've been located from the start right in Central Presbyterian Church, right here on the Green in Summit, uh, opposite the Summit Library. Uh, caddy corner from uh, the Connections, from the uh, Summit Middle School, and across the street from the Y. So we love our central location. And Beth, I believe your mother was very active right from the get-go, uh, with your father's support, of course, back there in terms of hometown. But we have an all-volunteer board, close to about 36 people. On Comcast, we are TV 36. On Verizon, we are TV 33. And the original core towns that we operated out of War Summit is our cornerstone. We crossed the county line into Milburn Short Hills. We then added Berkeley Heights, uh, Springfield, and New Providence. And what kind of is curious over time, uh, as you think about our growth, we've actually spread out, thanks to Verizon coming in, to about 32 towns now. And so we broadcast out through their various central offices to towns anywhere from Mendham and Morristown, uh, through the Oranges, down in our area here through Westfield Hillside uh, Union. And then we get to the rest of the world through our video on demand. We have a, a website and we have hundreds of shows on our video demand with links and you can watch those shows there. But I think it's always important to honor our founders. And with Hometown, the founders really looking at our certificate of incorporation come right from our area. You may, uh, some of the veterans in the room may remember a Holmes Bailey from Nottingham Road in Short Hills. Ann Redmond Martin from 6 Portland Road in Summit. Janan Graves from 22 Bedeau in Summit. Lawrence Chase from 84 Ashwood in Summit. And Helen Namark from 87 Canoe Brook in Summit. And I think it's kind of fascinating the summit routes that we have and how uh, in large part we draw our board uh, with Rick, Beth, Lisa, uh, Bob Davies and others uh, very active and prominent on our board. I think it's kind of interesting when you think about hometown. We broadcast out television shows uh, and we look to keep up with the latest technology as technology is constantly shifting. So where we were broadcast TV, uh, as, as Beth mentioned, when I got involved in about 1999, in my uh, professional career I've been with corporations, I've done a lot of consulting, 
And at one point I was consulting with the Bankers Roundtable and probably traveled for 41 weeks straight. And my uh, then wife and four children said, do you think you'd like to get to know us? I said, great idea. How about if I take some time off? So I took two years off, but was kind of curious. A few months into my sabbatical, they then asked me another question. They said, do you think you could get a hobby? In other words, could you get out of the house a little bit? I said, good idea. And we opened up uh, the local paper. And there it presents that over at then TV 36, now hometown, you could take a course in how to put together a television show. And so I took that for a few uh, evenings. And in my session happened to be a woman by the name of Gwen Sondike. Gwen was from Milburn. And Gwen said, we really need to get a Milburn show on there. Gwen knew how to get things moving. Next thing I find, I'm down in Milburn talking to the mayor, thinking I was just going to work a camera. I turn around, Gwen is gone. I'm talking with the mayor. Apparently, I'm the new host of this new show. <laughs> but what was fascinating about it is if you think about our mission at Hometown, we really tell stories. And what we look to do is we look to educate and entertain people in our area, and I add, hopefully entertain, about really the issues and people and events important to our local lives. And I'll share a little more with you about that later. What was kind of interesting was the first show that I had to do was with uh, an Owen Lampy who passed away just a few months ago. And Owen uh, was out of Milburn and considered Milburn's town historian. And he really brought this whole area to life that we take for granted. And so in that first show, we did two 30-minute uh, segments. And what was kind of comical was my first show ever. Uh, Owen was as prim and proper as they came. He looked like he could have been on the catalog front cover of Brooks Brothers. He was so crisp. And I was ready to start the opening show about the history and background of Milburn. We're doing as Amanda would the count when we're ready to start a show. Ten, nine, and somebody walks by, taps me on the shoulder and says, good luck on your first show, Fred. I look across at my guest, Owen, and he blanches. He said, have you ever done this before? And I said, not really, but you got to start someplace. <laughs> and luckily, the account went two, three, you know, down, zero, and off we went uh, talking. But here's the fascinating thing that Owen shared with us that we can then get out to hundreds of thousands of people in our areas. We went over to the ridges here by Beacon Hill and the Arboretum, and also on the other side of South Mountain in Short Hills. And we looked out over the expansive plains that take you out to New York City and take you out to Staten Island. And Owen brought alive the Revolutionary War in a way I never knew it. He said, we stand here on the Wachshon Mountains. Now, they're 400 to 500 feet tall, so we in here in New Jersey consider them mountains. But the topography is kind of fascinating, because what would happen is the British would be stationed in Staten Island, and they would march out literally along Morris Turnpike. And they would try to come to this area because the mountains had a gap in it known as Hobart Gap, which is where Route 24 comes. That was the one area, rather than scaling the mountains, they could get through the gap, try to get out to Morristown, to Jockey Hollow, where George Washington and his troops were, and they saved all the ammunition. And so what was interesting as I stood there with Owen is he brought alive probably what Thomas Jefferson saw, Ben Franklin saw, John Adams saw, George Washington, about our part in the revolution. It explains why so many battles took place in our area. So I just share that kind of interesting backstory about what you find out about our area as you go along. The hometown uh, world, if you think about what we uh, do, is how do we get funded? It's kind of an interesting aspect. And if you look at your, your bill, your Comcast bill, or your Verizon bill, we pay a customer service fee, if you will, that goes to the uh, various companies. And in turn, for them to get the right of ways to put the wire on the telephone poles to get to your house, whether it's Verizon or Comcast, the money that we pay them for the customer service fees, they give a portion of that back to the town. So for example, a summit will get $300,000. Out of that summit has been our best funder. In turn, they give us about $80,000, and that helps us run our $200,000 a year budget. With that, we then raise funds through production. And if you think about the partners that we have in the area, Paper Mill Playhouse happens to be such a partner of hometown. We're the production house for the, uh, the paper mill. Amanda can well attest to that. We are partnered up with Overlook Medical Center. Uh, we have been very fortunate over the years to receive grants from the Overlook Foundation for 30 Medical Minutes. 30 Medical being one of our longest running shows 
that we've had that goes back, I think, to the beginning of Hometown. Uh, we recently have begun a show called Overlook View, where we actually get inside the hospital and we showcase the technology that helps people save lives. For example, strokes, cyber knife and all. And we'll showcase that on Hometown. Uh, we uh, broadcast Summit City Council meeting live. We do the Milburn Town Committee. We do the Milburn Board of Ed. As I'm looking down my list here, we've partnered up with Reeves Reed Arboretum and the Visual Arts Center. And so we get inside and we showcase what goes on there. Now what's interesting is when I talked to uh, the chamber some years back, uh, when I was talking to them, this goes back into my earlier years here, what is it that we can do for merchants and members in town? And there's much we can do. And we actually have had over the years, both with Summit and with Milburn, uh, shows called Meet the Merchants and Other Names, where we will, through the chamber and with the chamber, showcase maybe three or four different businesses in town. And what happens is, if you think we can get right inside your store, we can showcase various items that you sell, we can bring alive what your service is about. And I know when we started out doing this some years back, one merchant in town, I think it was called The Sampler at that time, did a portion of a show, maybe about uh, seven to 10 minutes out of a 30 minute show. And the next time I ran into this individual who owned that shop, she said as a result of the show, they sold 47 items of a particular room uh, deodorizer, probably $100 each, top line revenue of uh, maybe 5,000, uh, gross income of maybe 3,000, but it was really getting the word out and educating people about what's going on in that particular store that helps. So I share that with you in terms of for your businesses, you want to bring in foot traffic, you want to increase dollars per square foot, we can help you there. We have a um, uh, concert on Summit's Green. You go to Summit's Green, you see hundreds of people there, we can get that same concert out to 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 people just by our reach. And shows that we do, we'll put on about three to five times a week, morning, noon, nights, and weekends. And then we send links typically to those who produce with us. And as we send the link, you can share it with whoever you would like out and about the world. We have had over the uh, last 10 years, uh, hometown television news, where we have put it on several times uh, a day throughout the week. Uh, now information moves so quickly as we know in this world of social media that we have begun to shift gears and we have sunset the news in anticipation of thinking something more around a featured monthly magazine. Maybe that's an area we could work with the chamber in terms of possibilities. We have, um, as we keep moving forward with the technology of hometown, it's kind of interesting. When I arrived, we had three cameras that uh, alternatively, as I was talking with Bob Davies uh, just uh, yesterday, would show somebody appearing on TV either in highlighted in green or blue or red. Now, if you were the Incredible Hulk or the Blue Man or with the New Jersey Devils, that probably worked. But for the rest of us, it gave you kind of a, an odd coloration. Thanks to our contacts in town and foundations, people began to fund us and we were able to get better cameras and we were able to get high def cameras and we were able to get teleprompters on the cameras. And recently through what we send out over the internet, we've gone high def. And it's really through the funding that as you advance with the world of technology, and I think the only thing that really changes our world when you really think about it since the beginning of time is technology. Nothing else changes the world. I get the demographics and the movements and the flows, but you introduce a new technology into society, it changes abruptly. So we've been trying to stay pace with uh, the technology. And Amanda, along with Jonathan, back in the fall, we partnered with the Paper Mill Playhouse. And with the Paper Mill Playhouse, they have the Rising Star Award. For the first time, we went live with the Rising Star Award. And that is the top 100 high schools in New Jersey that have big theater programs. It's our New Jersey version for High School of the Oscars. And we're able to film it live. We knew ahead of time who the candidates were, we'd go right in and zoom on them and film them. We had a big truck outside broadcasting. And these are the type of advancements we're looking to, to make more of. My notes here are a few other things. We have uh, Dr. Donald DeFabio uh, does the natural way. We have Money Matters, Mary Parker out of Sealhouse does that. Uh, we've done authors of note, Frank Masiosi with a former uh, Summit resident, Brian Burroughs, 
who did Barbarians at the Gate, Public Enemy, other various uh, shows. It's kind of interesting too, at one point when Jordan Glatt was mayor of Summit, Brian for a while was co-host for him when Steve Murphy was running for office. And the signals that you send to people inside as you're doing a show is very important, the hand signals. You're halfway through, you have 10 minutes to go, five. And what we hadn't told Brian was this means wrap it up. And he gets to the end of the show with Jordan Glatt and the director keeps going like that. Brian interprets this as mean it, keep talking. <laughs> so he's saying to the mayor, so what else is going on? So what else are you doing? And it's kind of funny as you get inside the production of television, Thank God we have editing that makes us look good when we get beyond that. Uh, we have, um, uh, we did, uh, we actually did go live with a show called The Wisdom of Broadway. Father Frank McNulty out of Central Prez has been a fan of Broadway. Father Frank just uh, crested on his 90th birthday. Uh, he was chosen by all the priests of North America to present to Pope John Paul uh, a few decades ago. He's followed Broadway for decades. And he talked about the wisdom in Broadway about life, about love, about suffering, about redemption. And we had that, we actually did that live out of Central Press and broadcast. And those are the things that we enjoy doing with Hometown to really bring alive what's going on in our community. We, um, we have a theme that we call heat. And heat uh, is a way we like to think about areas we'll specialize in to bring to our community. So we talk about health. How do we bring health alive in the community? And as we do that, we think then uh, with education. So H-E, health, education, A, the arts. T, we, we spell heat with two T's. So we have technology and we have trends. And every year we kind of theme it. So 2014 was our year of education. And we honored at that point during the course of that year Peter Woolley, who's the head of FDU, Janet Fike, the superintendent of the Morris Union Jointser, Bill Myron, the principal of Milburn High, and Frank Giuliano, the head of the Arboretum here in Summit. Uh, last year, the year of health, we honored Alan Lieber, the president of Overlook, Christy Hottie, the executive director of the American Red Cross here in town, Paul Carniel, who had recently served as the 222nd president of the New Jersey Medical Society, all the 8,000 doctors in Jersey, and Rob Rubino, who most recently was president of Summit Council. This year is the year of the arts. And so as we're going through this, we're starting to showcase more of the arts. We have a meeting coming up early next week with the Visual Arts Center. And as I said previously, we were already partnered with the likes of Paper Mill and with the Shakespeare Theater. And so we look to keep showcasing what's going on in town. I shared with you that we're looking to move things forward in terms of being relevant with technology. So fortunately we have, uh, along with our other members of the board, Lisa Allen, who heads up not just our volunteers, but social media. And Lisa is kind enough to be here today to just share a little bit about what we're doing in the social media space. All right. So we all know how important social media is, and it's grown exponentially. When I first started, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. All right. When, we first, when I first started about two and a half years ago, we had about 89 friends. And so we thought, how are we gonna leverage where everyone is headed? And so in the last two and a half years, we have about 762 new friends, which is fantastic, right? We do our website, which we revamped. We have uh, Facebook, we have YouTube. And we also do Twitter, but it's not quite growing as fast as we would like it because I find that if you look at Facebook and you look at your numbers, about 60% of women right now are engaging with us on Facebook. So if women are your sweet spot, we're your place to go. From 18 to 20, uh, sorry, 25 to 54 is our biggest audience. All right, and then last month we had 9,000 posts reach people's timeline. So we're getting out there, we're growing, it's really exciting. But what I wanna tell you today is, we're really trying to reach out and touch the influencers in the community, that's you. And we wanna make sure that if you are interested in growing your business, like you're saying, photography, right? It starts with a good um, headshot. But with business, you want to get a good video on your website because people want to touch you, they want to feel you, they want to see you, they want to hear you. And the best way to do that is put a 30 second video on your website, tell them who you are, and then you share it on your Facebook. We share it on our Facebook. We get you out there. 
So we've really been trying to grow our presence by making sure that people do their own videos, come in, legitimize, and do a show with us. We really are priding ourselves on trying to get out in a new dynamic way. I will say, and everybody in this room probably knows, millennials are our biggest challenge, right? Because millennials, here's what they do. They go to their parents and they say, hey, what's your web key? And then they take that web key to, the, to New York City, they log on, and they download their shows from the internet, right? They're not watching TV. So we're trying to figure out, what, what is that balance? How do we get out to the millennials? That's YouTube. So when we do a show, we make sure that we put that show right on YouTube, and then people can download it. And you're getting your message out to a younger crowd. So we're still figuring that out. But I think over the last two, two and a half years, we've really increased our um, exposure. We're really, sorry, we're really happy with the engagement. But if you haven't liked us, actually, let me just ask this. Who's liked us? <coughs> So lots of opportunity well, here. I'm going to go home because I can have to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So please. So it's, um, I'm going to spell it out. Oh, wait. Just Facebook. Are you on Facebook? Because I know I asked website. Yes. Who's on Facebook? OK, perfect. So when you go to Facebook, look for us. It's hometown. I'm going to spell it because it's H-O-M. E capital T O W N E Hometown TV. Go like us and make sure you don't. It's TV, not spelled out. Television. T uh, television. television. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah hometown, television. television. Yeah, okay. and make sure you don't like the wrong one because there are a couple out there in I think it's Seattle or something. So, please go like us on um, Hometown TV on Facebook, and I'm going to pass it over to Fred. Unless anyone has any questions for me. Okay. Yeah. So if you Google like let's say architects. Would it connect to your site as well as to all the architects in the area? Um, no, not necessarily. So what you want to do is you want to like us. And then if you did a show with us or you did even a commercial, just like a 30-second snippet for your website, we put it on our Facebook page and we share it out to our 762 friends. Actually, we have a wider reach. Um, like I said, the last month we had 9,000 people reach our posts. But a Google search wouldn't necessarily go to your site. Not unless you're putting in our name. No, okay. no. All right. Yeah. It's more about making sure you're getting your message out. So if you do a video, you want people to see it. And if you're not sending it out, you're, you're partnering with an influencer in the community who has other friends. And so we actually can target, I will say this, we can target, so say that you did a video with us, whether it's a show or a commercial, and then um, we posted it, we can target it out, we can pay to reach the friends of our influencers' friends. Or if you have a demographic, a specific demographic you want to reach, we go in and we target that demographic. So we can be very specific from the age range, you know, where they live. Is it architects? You can put that as part of the search. Um, but going on to Facebook, it's not quite like Google, right? right? When you go on, you know, you can go on and type in architects. There's things that come up. It doesn't necessarily mean hometown's going to come up because we're a TV station. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And how do people watch? Because I remember sure. years ago I was solicited for Channel 36, it was, or something. Yeah, and I didn't get involved. But it sounds like it's much more vibrant now. Okay. So, um, how do people watch your shows? Yeah, so uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. We can, we also put them on our website, which is on demand. Um, but what happens is once you do a show, we create a link and then we upload it also to Facebook also to YouTube, and then you just take that link and you share it. So if it goes on to Facebook, and most people, and you raise your hand if you are following along in terms of what I'm saying. I just want to make sure everybody gets what I'm saying. More or less. <laughs> More or less. Okay. So everybody, raise your hands. Everybody knows what a share is on Facebook? Yep. Okay, good, good. All right. So when you, we'll give you a link that you'll put on your Facebook page, and then you press share. It goes out to all, all the people. Friends. All your friends, yeah, as well as our friends and all our influencers. So even though we have 762 followers or likes that we are growing every day, we got 14 in one week, we had 29 and 80 in another week, so we're really being aggressive. We still, when we pay for those posts, we also reach 9,000 people. Sorry. But that. your shows wouldn't necessarily be on something like the New Jersey so no, but but here's a really great thing. We have something called Jag and Fred can talk more about that, but is a national network. So we can take any show that we do and put it on um, Jag stands for Jersey Access Group. Jersey Access Group. So there's lots of other TV stations and um, national you can talk about this, mm -hmm. but it can go on that. So it has access. Go ahead, Lisa, Bob. Lisa, you might want to elaborate if someone does a program, how many times a week does that program show? 
and what duration that is? So I'm not on the programming committee, but it shows quite often, and I don't know um, if I'd you. Four times a week. Really. Yeah, yeah, and you can work that out in your deal too. I'm sure if if you take a look at what's most effective, one is the best time to show it, but at least four or five times a week. And the and the other thing is now I'm getting really in the nuts and bolts. We have the bulletin board, so we just um, updated the bulletin board, which is amazing. We went HD, so make sure you put a little extra makeup on because HD really shows. Um, but we updated our bulletin board so we can actually have a sound on our bulletin board. Where it used to be stagnant, and if you walk away from the TV, you don't know what's on the bulletin board. Now, you, if you decide that you wanted to do a 10-second snippet for the bulletin board, then people can hear you. So as they walk away from the TV, they know what's on. So there's the bulletin board, there's Facebook, there's YouTube. Um, we have Vimeo, but I, 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 probably most people, does anyone know what Vimeo is? Exactly. So it's, yeah. So it's really more for the professional side, Vimeo. Um, YouTube is the place to be because if it's not on YouTube, no kid is going to see it, <laughs> you know, um, maybe on Facebook. But the biggest Facebook users are really 25 to 54 women. So I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They, they're the ones who pick my profession. Yeah, yeah. So any other questions? No? All right. Back to you, Fred. Sorry. I took that. Do you want to? Do you want to? Okay. Now you can see why Lisa heads up our social media aspect. Uh, just a few more comments so we can continue on um, the question and answers here, which seems unnatural at this point. But let me just share um, this particular aspect with you to some of the questions. Briefly, if we put up a show, behind that you put tag words, 10, 15, 20 words, and those keywords like your name, the name of your practice, whatever, is what elevates you in the Google search. We look to stay relevant with the latest technology because while we produce content, what's relevant is where people go to dine on the information they want. What are the crossroads of their consumption? So Lisa and I were talking earlier, for example, about where should hometown be on Facebook, and I noticed just recently, as you scroll up through Facebook, all of a sudden you see television shows appearing if you're linked in with somebody who happens to be a television celebrity. We need to explore that in terms of, as people are going through Facebook, we bring up shows. Now, just I'll close out with this one in terms of some of the shows we're doing. Uh, Barry Farber, who you might know, is in the back of Vicinity magazine. He writes an article. In a way, Vicinity is the companion of uh, the collection. And Barry will do an article. He's recently started doing television shows with Hometown. And uh, we call it Breakthrough. And Barry, for his first guest, had in Oz Perlman, who was on America's Got Talent. He is a mentalist. He is a magician. Somehow, he unlocked Lisa's phone. We're still trying to figure out how to do that. Somehow, he guessed somebody else's uh, dog's name from when they were a child. The stuff that he does is absolutely amazing. But with Barry, what we're looking to do is figure out a way of syndicating him with what Lisa said, Jersey Access Group gets you out across New Jersey. We're trying to figure out how to move him out across the country. We have uh, another show, uh, Lisa's startup called As a Matter of Fact, and in that she interviewed Dale Caldwell, who has a pretty interesting background. Out of Princeton, out of Wharton, worked for Deloitte with Rick some years back, runs a charter school down in Trenton for 350 children, is passionate about education and is passionate about the middle class. And that show airs right now. We also have one final item I'll mention, a show we're going to start up called A Community Conversation. Uh, Lisa will be part of it. Beth will be part of it. I will moderate a roundtable every other show. We have George Lukash, who's in town, who's part of it, along with Dave Baumgars, who you might know. Now, what's the nature of the show? We are looking in this time of fast-moving information to basically be uh, one of the key sources on information that elevates a level of conversation in town. How is summit budget shaped? How are the dollars put into the city council? What about dollars to the county? What about dollars for education? How are dollars appropriated inside the education space? How are decisions made? What's relevant to you in terms of educating your children, your neighbor's children? What is the cost of education? What is the value? So those are the type of shows we want to start doing, interviewing local superintendents as well as the state of New Jersey superintendents to get information to you. So again, within our community, we can have even more intelligent conversations about what's most important in your life. So let me pause there.
open for any more questions. Hopefully we'll have the answers and we've got a panel of experts here in terms of people that have been on the hometown board for years. Please. The person who's the magician. Yes. Who you're trying to get broader exposure for. Would that show ever produce income for that person? Uh, clearly, yes. And the objective is as we're doing that is the concepts we're thinking about is syndication rights and how we syndicate that okay. and sponsorships for that. Okay. So if you think in a broader sense as you find searches going on and then people suddenly put an advertisement next to the search, same concept. So they might eventually become a reality uh, or a talk show or... Well said. So we're looking at like um, stations as well as public broadcast okay. in terms of syndication. What else would you like to know here on this snowy Friday morning? Please. How do you sign up? <laughs> How do you sign up? Well, we can connect you right here with Amanda, you know, in terms of going over to see the studio. It's again in the basement. We like to say the lower level of Central Prez. <laughs> you can park right there off of Elm Street, and then we have about a 2,000 square foot studio. And if Amanda gets your card afterwards, we'll get you over to hometown, give you a tour, and then take it from there. And if you, we always invite volunteers if you'd like to, now that's the way I got started, work in a camera so I thought, but you're welcome to come over and volunteer and get involved directly. Learn the television business from the inside out and who knows where it's going, but it's moving very rapidly. Uh, a few years back as we're looking at our internet which records where uh, people come in from throughout the globe and look to view various shows we have on the internet. All of a sudden there's a whole series of um, people coming on from Holland so what is it in Holland that's connecting people with hometown? Turned out one of the churches in town was doing a series of talks that we were filming on their routes back to uh, the Netherlands, sort of a Dutch reforming type thing. So it's just kind of curious where we get viewers from all around the world. <clears throat> what are your hours if you want a tour? Well, our, our hours are basically, Amanda? Uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. Yeah. And Amanda, anything else you can add here from behind the camera? We'll get your voice over on it. <laughs> well, I think you pretty much covered it. We have a lot of fun, interesting things coming up, as Fred said. We also have a new children's show coming up. So we do all sorts of different types of neat things. Um, and we cover lots of events. Even though we don't have the news anymore, we, I kind of created um, this new show, it's very short, called Around Town. And so it's basically covering whatever's going on in around town, Summit, Millburn, etc. Um, we've covered a fashion show, fundraiser last night. Um, we've done the Summit skate, the ice skating rink, there was the Summit Green, which was neat. So I went into the Easter egg roll, all sorts of stuff. So um, even though the news isn't there, we're still covering those local events, saying hyper -lo local. So yeah, that's a <laughs> good. Thank you very much. And I, I have to say a personal testimonial. I have been on television a couple of times, interviewed, mm -hmm. and I've had my picture up here in our collection, and I am amazed. I go to the shop, right, and people stop me and say, I saw you on TV, now I know who you are. Um, I saw your picture in the collection. I'm thinking, without my glasses, I couldn't even recognize myself. Uh, it's so small. So it's amazing how these vehicles capture the imagination of our market. and. Uh, it's very, very special that we have what we have at Hometown TV because you're taking us into the 21st century. So I think, I know some of my tenants have done the Meet the Merchant series. Mm -hmm. um, it, it brings you out of your store, out of your business, into their home and just makes it so much easier. We do business with the people we know. So get known. Great. Thank you. Thank you.